Hi guys, welcome back to Pacific Northwest Sustainable Gardening. I'm really excited for this episode because I want to show you some new additions that I have uh, for my food forest, some new, some new perennials that I, that I picked up. What I'm trying to do at this point is I'm really trying to establish the shrub layer of my, of my food forest. And I was able to find this really cool nursery in Portland, Oregon called One Green World. And they just have some amazing stuff, some really, really cool stuff. And uh, in this episode, I'm gonna show you uh, what I was able to pick up there. So this first shrub is a is an autumn olive, but what's really cool about it is it's an amber autumn olive. So instead of giving your traditional red fruit, this one actually is going to give yellow fruit. It will get, you know, 8 to 10 feet tall, and it's also hardy down to minus 35 degrees Fahrenheit. The next shrub here is a sweet scarlet gummy berry. It's a native to uh, Russia, China, and Japan, and it makes a, a large sweet red fruit that supposedly tastes similar to pie cherries. It's hardy all the way down to uh, zone four and minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. The, uh, the gummy berry can get to about five to six feet tall and is partially self-fertile. So, you know, if you want to get a real good crop, you really need to have another variety next to it, such as what we have next, which is the red gem gummy berry. The red gem gummy berry has a lot of the, uh, the same characteristics as the sweet scarlet gummy berry. And both of them, along with the autumn olive that I showed earlier, have the capability of fixing nitrogen which is extremely beneficial for both the plant itself and surrounding plants. So here we have a hybrid silverberry, which is a, a cross between two different silverberry species. The silverberry produces small red fruit that you will get in early spring. To me, the, the silverberry is a really pretty shrub that makes these large silvery leaves and it'll get six to eight feet tall, and it's hardy all the way down to uh, zone six or minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So here we have the Ukraine highbush cranberry. And from what I've seen on other YouTube videos is that it's not an actual true cranberry. And apparently, after it ripens in September, you really got to wait till after the first frost to harvest it or the berry is going to be really, really bitter. So this shrub uh, will get 8 to 10 feet tall, is hardy all the way down to zone 3 or minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So I also bought some plants to work on my vine layer of the food forest. And here we have the uh, seedless blue muscat grape. And the only reason I got this grape was because at one point I had a, a, a wine, a muscat wine that tasted really good. And so I thought it'd be really cool to have a, a muscat grape vine. And my goal is to trellis the grapes all down the fence line here. This grape is hardy down to zone six or minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Here in Oregon in the Willamette Valley, the Pinot Noir grape grows really well. And this particular variety is the Pinot Noir Dijon 115, and is supposedly one of the best quality Pinot Noir wine grapes. It's a uh, hardy down to zone seven or minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So I wanted a really good sweet blue table grape, and so I found this New York 47616 blue seedless table grape. It was developed by Cornell University for its, for its dark blue, sweet, really flavorful, and early ripening grapes, which sounded really good to me, and it's a hardy down to zone 6 or minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So moving back to the shrub layer of the food forest, I picked up these next five blueberry plants at Johnson Brothers Farm in Eugene, Oregon. And this first one is the Duke blueberry. And what's really cool about this one is it, it blooms late so that you can avoid a, a, a spring frost, but it also ripens early. So this one actually ripens in May. So this one is not actually a blueberry, it's actually a, a huckleberry, which is an evergreen shrub that's native to the Pacific Northwest. And it makes berries that are similar to blueberries, but um, apparently they're much smaller. So here we have the Chandler blueberry. And the reason I got this one is because supposedly it makes really large blueberries. It's a mid-season blueberry, so it'll ripen in July and it's uh, hardy all the way down to zone 4 or minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. And also, it'll get about 4 to 5 feet tall. So this next blueberry is the Jersey blueberry. And the reason I got this one is because it's late season. It ripens in August. So when all the other blueberries are finishing up, this one is going to be producing its crop of blueberries. It's also hardy all the way down to zone 4 but is a little bit taller, so it'll reach six to seven feet tall. So the last blueberry plant that I have here is called the Sunshine Blue Blueberry. If it doesn't get too cold here in the Pacific Northwest, this particular variety will be an evergreen. It will ripen in June and is hardy all the way down to zone five. However, if you want a really short shrub, this is a good one to get because it will only get three to four feet tall. So I had never thought about growing this until I saw it in the One Green World Nursery. It is actually a Korean tea plant. What's really cool about the Korean tea plant is it's hardy all the way down to zone 7, or 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Now in cooler climates, it can be in full sun, but in hot regions it actually needs to be in partial shade. So I've always wanted to grow citrus, but here in the Pacific Northwest, it's a little difficult to do so. So I found this Maiwa kumquat tree. Now we are in zone 8B here, and the Maiwa kumquat is actually hardy down to zone 8. It's November right now, so I'm going to go ahead and keep uh, this plant indoors for the winter. So I chose this variety because it's supposed to taste really good and is known as the sweet kumquat. Now, even hardier than the kumquat is this yuzu echandrin that we have here. This citrus tree will produce three-inch diameter fruits that are lemon-lime flavor. And the cool thing about this citrus is that it's hardy all the way down to zone 7 or 0 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, even though this is a pretty hardy tree, I'm still going to keep it indoors over the winter. So adding to the herb layer of my food forest, I put in this cosmic perennial kale. And it's hardy down to zone eight as a perennial or 10 degrees Fahrenheit once the roots really get established. So the last thing I have to show you is an addition to the root layer of the food forest and it is the hardy perennial leek. They are hardy down to zone five and will get about 18 to 24 inches high. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed seeing all the additions to my food forest. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to see future videos. Mm -hmm.